Hello and welcome back to Space Engine Days. In today's video, we're looking at another modded turret that fits perfectly well with the base game due to the way it's been designed and due to how close it is to Keen's own turret designs. So this thing is called the Coil Gun Turret, which is this lovely thing sitting right next to me, which is basically a glorified railgun turret, but this time it's a much more rapid firing turret that's much more comparable to two small block railguns firing in quick succession. And of course there will be a link to the skybox I'm currently using, it's a lovely one with a giant big black hole in the background, lots and lots of stars, and over into this section, we've got a giant colourful orange area to really bright up the sky, especially if you're on a planet using a mod that gets rid of all the atmospheric effects. Anyway, turning back around to the core gun turret, as I was saying, this is comparable to two small railgun turrets, it has a high rate of fire, it's got decent range, it's got a lower projectile speed, but ultimately we will go through that in detail a bit later on in the video, so the creator has made a lovely little sheet showing how it compares to the vanilla railguns. So what we're going to do is have a quick look around the outside of this thing, and then we're going to go and test it out, see what it looks like when it's firing, then I'll spawn in the big ship in the background, and well, let it have a bit of fun. But first of all, grab me hold this character, dropping all the way down, it's now time to get into a little seat, and just hop into here and turn off the idle animations, and of course make sure it's facing in a nice direction like so. So grab me hold of the free camera, this is what it looks like on the side, as I said, it's basically just a small version of a railgun strapped to a Gatling gun base. If I was to put my light on and just highlight it a little bit, as you can see it's very familiar to the Gatling gun base. Wait if I was to pop out here one more time, come over to here, and actually spawn in the Gatling turret. There it is, dropping it all the way down, bringing it all the way across like so, and then turning it around. You can see just how close this thing is compared to the vanilla versions. And of course for another small comparison, let's go and find that rocket turret. So into here, dropping out all the way down. And there we go, we can see it's got a much squarer base, but still very comparable at the end of the day. Anyway, enough of that, back over to this turret, hiding all that once again. So there's our access panel at the back to manually load stuff in and out. It would move slightly up to here, we can see how it's going to spin around, and slightly up to this section, how it's going to lift up and down. And there is the back of the railgun, which does look very fancy. It would come all the way up and look at this section, We've got a small little camera on top, or a small little fake camera on top, which is how it could be seen from the gun's eye view, when we're sitting in a chair and take over it. So got a red light on one side, camera in the middle, then a little knobbly part on the left hand side. We're to get all the way up to it, simply what it looks like. All the way from this, along the main barrel. There we are, got some lovely detail along the top here, in form of screws holding everything together. Then come across the actual main section here. There we go, so there's the coil in the middle, where our shot's going to be coming out of. Around to this section, there we are, doesn't look too different to the actual railgun itself. It does have some subtle differences, where it's to pull the camera slightly away and actually put the railgun on screen. Go move this slightly away there, turn it around so we can see the barrel. And that's simply what the railgun barrel looks like. So we are missing the top and bottom sections, but we still have the middle part where the projectile is going to come out. It will switch this over to the small block version, bring that all the way across, turn it all the way around. And there we go, we can see that is slightly different how they've been designed. Coming out of that, moving over to this once again, and moving slightly down, so there's our middle section which is going to spin all the way around. Moving all the way down on the front, there's our access panel to actually control everything about it. Then we've got four little plugs, two on each side, for us to say, pretend to connect wires up to this, and we'll hook up your main ship, or main base. As we come around onto the base, we see how it's been screwed down on the steel block below it. It was come all the way down under this thing. No surprises here, one large connection point for you to attach onto a conveyor, onto a cargo container, or to wherever you need this on your ship. And I think without further ado, it's now time for me to grab hold my character and actually show you this thing shooting. Going like this, getting to the seat, actually taking over on the top there. So here's our camera view on top of the gun. I'm gonna spin this around, and now we're gonna shoot it in first person view. So I'm just gonna hold down the left mouse button. One, two, three, four, five. And then we go into a reload, which does take a very short amount of time. Now, like I said at the very start, this is comparable to two small rail guns firing in quick succession. So it may seem overpowered at first, but it's actually perfectly balanced at the end of the day. And there we go once again. It was going to pop out of this and actually switch it to fire all the time with a free camera. So there we go, that's simply what it looks like from this side. We'll let it fire it again. And there we go, we see how the projectile sort of comes out much more further away from the barrel compared to the traditional guns. But still, it works at the end of the day, especially when you're looking at it from a distance. So that's what it looks like. So now what we're going to do is grab hold of my character, we're going to turn off the turret, now it's time to fly out here and spawn in a large ship, we're going to let it shoot it up to see what kind of damage it can deal. So finally the good old albatross in the spawn menu, and I'm going to give that over to the space pirate, disable all of its guns, 
I'm just going to let it shoot it while going through its specifications. And here we go, I've now given it over to the Space Pirates and that gun's going to have a hell of a time just destroying it by itself. But as for the actual stats of this gun, so the creator has made a lovely little sheet as you go over all the different stuff, comparing the small railgun, the large railgun and the coil gun. So as for its damage per shot, the coil gun does 1,600, which is a hell of a lot less than say the small railgun or the large railgun, which come in 8,000, and the other one at 50,000, which is a hell of a lot different. The overall damage per second, however, is much more closer to the large railgun. So the coil gun does 1,000, the large railgun does 1,055. A singular small railgun only does 500. As for the actual power consumption, we then got 7.2 megawatts for the coil gun, 38 for the large, and then 3.6 for the small. The overall projectile speed is the same as the small railgun at 1,000 meters per second. The rate of fire, however, is a hell of a lot different. Where the coil gun comes in at 37.5 rounds per minute, the large one is 1 1.2, and then the small railgun is 3.75. The overall range is the same as the small railgun, 1,400, which is still a lot less than the large railgun, which comes in at 2,000. So that's the overall stats of this turret. So at the end of the day, it's basically just a turreted version of the large railgun, which is much more fast at shooting, but has much slower projectile speed. So its overall purpose is a bit in between the small railguns and the large railguns, and not really too different from, say, having a bunch of artillery gun, a bunch of assault cannons strapped to your ship. So with that all done and out of the way, one final thing to do is of course go through the ammunition because it does use a different ammo set compared to the standard railguns. So finding my character one again which is sitting right next to the good old albatross, gonna let them keep pummeling it. Now wherever that turret has gone, I don't know how I keep losing these things but they're just clearly shooting at it. All the way over to here, got myself a lovely assembler sitting in the middle of this turret where we come over to conductions, over to ammo, and here we go. So up to here is our modded ammo which comes in a lovely crate form. Then down to here is our standard railgun, the small and the large. The large standard railgun uses iron, nickel, silicon and uranium. And the coil gun ammo uses iron, nickel, gold and magnesium. This is a hell of a lot easier to gather on the earth flight planet when you're first starting out in survival mode. Say compared to trying to scrounge up some uranium to build one of these. So it's a lot more accessible so you can build a lot more of these. The game with its sheer rate of fire, how many rounds you're doing per minute. It makes sense for it to be fairly cheap so you can actually utilize it compared to the larger railgun. And I suppose the final final thing to go through is of course turn this around so we can actually see what kind of destruction we're doing to the albatross which looks like quite a lot considering all the smoke coming off it. But coming into here, finding the coil gun, uh, we won't do that, I'll just come into here and actually find the weapon blocks. Oh that was the large hydrogen tank exploding in the background. Yes on the weapon blocks, so finding the large railgun once again we can see how much that costs. Where we see the real important thing on here is the superconductors coming at 150 but comparing that to the coil gun over here we see it's a little bit cheaper coming in at 60 superconductors and everything else that we can easily build around the start of the game. So there we go, that is the coil gun and looking at the overall damage done to this large ship, as you can see it's not overpowered in the slightest, it's doing basically the same as say an artillery gun or an assault cannon just constantly pummeling into this poor little ship and if it wasn't for that hydrogen tank exploding it wouldn't have done as much damage as it's currently doing. So getting a very close look up at what is going on here, so we see it's gone all the way through here, now going for those atmospheric thrusters down there. Moving across over to this part with all the heavy smoke coming off it, it doesn't actually look too bad. The overall shell of this ship doesn't look too damaged, but if you were to come around on foot, while it's still actually going through and shooting it, down to here, this side seems perfectly okay. Coming in through this doorway, opening up this, closing up that because it's got an airlock system on here, walking all the way down, still can't really see too much damage. Here we go, here's the first set. So there's the shot all the way up there. Coming through here, still not too much damage on the inside. Rounding the main bridge, no damage on this side. Coming through onto the opposite side. Here we go, a bit more damage over here where we see two large atmospheric thrusters have been destroyed. Then coming out of here, moving towards the back of the ship. All the way through, opening up this door once again, closing it right behind me, opening up this one. We see all the parts flying off it where it has been damaged. So opening up that, closing that, opening up this, into here, and we can see where it's actually destroying some fire assemblers, O2 huge generators, and of course our large containers and all of that. So that is currently being pummeled, but it still hasn't been destroyed. Something down there just blew up, which I believe was the gyroscope. Here's all of our hydrogen tanks, still somehow in one piece. Walking around here, still not too much. And to save time with me walking across to the other side, just going to delete that, jetpack all the way over, dropping all the way down, now it's time to walk past this section. So again, still not too much damage really, 
considering how fast it's been firing, how long it's been firing. A couple of blocks here are missing, which are easy to replace. We do have plenty of backups on here. It's not too bad if we still want to keep using this ship. And it seems like most of the damage has been block work. But yes, that is that for the coil gun. It's a lovely little modern turret to use in your world. If you do want to have a turreted version of the rail guns, they completely fit with the vanilla style and are not too overpowered at the end day. They are perfectly reasonable compared to the other turrets and should do very well in combat. But again, like the rail guns, not going to be too good against fast moving targets. That's still going to be very much a Gatling gun and interior turret solution. So be linked to the description below if you should out and play around yourself. Highly recommend you do, as well as a link to the Skybox I'm currently using. I'll be back with another video sometime soon. Bye bye.